all right guys so i hope that everybody's doing well today we're going to be looking at a video by pastor jamal bryant and the reason why i say pastor is because this is a pastor who is for abortion or at least defending it you actually don't know his views because i think he's so confused on what he's doing that first he is defending abortion and the next right he's uh, praying for all the unborn babies so uh, let's just get to it so we can get some context for what i'm saying this week america turned back the hands of time and declared war on women in this nation i wanted us to make any stand sense, okay. resolvely to uh, say to this nation uh, that if america was authentically pro-life then they would immediately abolish the death penalty okay if they were really pro-life then they would put more money into Head Start programs. Second issue. If they were pro-life, they would seek to cure the opiate addiction in Third this issue. nation. If they were pro-life, they would make sure that teachers feel safe in their schools. Almost. Four issues. This is typically what a person who does not know what they're talking about does in order to drive the people to be anger or enraged and basically co-sign with their rebellion so let's talk about let's keep going if they were pro-life there would be stiff stricter measures about gun control in this nation again this is five different subjects that have nothing to do with abortion if this had anything to do with abortion we'll welcome the argument but he's using four other problems in the country to validate the murder of innocent blood we would not have to deal with food insecurity. But I stand with now the living matriarch, matriarch? of the movement, Maxine Waters. Disqualified for mentioning her name. They have declared war on 32 million women in this nation. And one thing about a woman, when she is focused, she is not going to stop until she gets what she needs. We stand, all the but people we realize that this clapping. is not just a this is woman's not a church. issue. This is a cult. Unless I don't understand how pregnancy works, men have to extend their voices as well. Yes, men do have to extend their voices as well. There's plenty of parents and men who should have a say in what happens to the baby, regardless of anything. Because if they've both made the decision, it shouldn't be the decision of one, whether the seed that one planted gets to live or not. And so we speak to this nation to declare that new birth stands with the amazing women of this church, of this community, and of this country, that women Meanwhile, have the right the, to have authority the over right their here, body. And it right should there. not be legislated by men in Washington, D.C. Let's hold on one second. He's got a problem with men legislating in Washington, D.C. what happens to women's rights, but he's a male pastor advocating for for women so what's the problem here why would a male be against other male making a choice for somebody else and he's basically doing the same thing you are so confused I want all of us all over this room would you do me a favor this is would you horrible. celebrate the women around the celebrate you murder who are competent enough to make decisions about their Let's bodies, the people decisions this is about their life clapping and decisions they're clapping for the shedding future. of innocent blood we're praying steadfastly because You're what praying. we are seeing yes, Lord. Uh, is babies racism be murdered. rearing this doesn't make any head sense. again. Uh, with this measure that has just taken place, uh, babe, black baby infant mortality is going to rise by 30%. Uh, and hence, we cover the lives of our mothers, of our pregnant mothers, and our unborn babies. I need you to do me a favor, please. He's talking about how this is going to affect you know black babies or, or black mothers which again if he had done any amount of research prior to opening his mouth he would know that roe v wade was started to be able to control the birthing of black babies so while he's trying to defend abortion it was designed at one time to go against his race but this is the problem when people see race before they see kingdom he is not a good pastor he's not an example of a good leader because true men and women of god they see kingdom before they see color that's why the bible says every tongue every nation every every person male and female 
It was a Father's Day. Today we stand in the gap for mothers and for emerging mothers. I need you to do me a favor, please, and because a baby. I need you here's to a, be mindful. Here's a baby. Here's a, a clapping mother with a baby, actually two, one sleeping next to her in the chair and clapping for the uh, abortion loss carnal but they are mighty unto god for the pulling down of strongholds there is something satanic yes. afoot yes they in are washington you are the dc demon we're fighting. so today you are proudly, the demon we're fighting. we dedicate he's worried about washington dc he should be worried about atlanta georgia where people are killing each other all the time he needs to focus on his own city first of all he needs to focus on his own heart uh, we dedicate babies in our church they're coming at this time because of he's doing this while a baby dedication there's a scripture in hebrews that says that there is a book about us and there's also made multiple scriptures in the book of isaiah that talk about that every person has a book every time that we kill a baby we kill and we destroy a book in heaven only God can make a baby. Who are you, Jamal Bryant, to determine whether somebody's book and destiny can be completely erased and obliterated from earth? We believe that children are the future, uh, but we also believe that mothers have this the right terrible. to elect where it is that they are in the season and the stages of their life, and they should not be criminalized for making decisions. You should change the name that of their church from New Birth to, to Lack of Hope. They are. As we're living in a world that, that is declaring from new birth to no war hope. on women. And we he's praying for babies as he's is also praying for, for them. The battle, that there'll be no obstacle you will not be able to overcome. I pray every, every laying on of hands that came, every curse that came from him, we reverse it if there was everything transferred. I anoint your hands even in this moment. See, but this is the problem. This guy is well known publicly for having zipper problems and he has six or seven babies out of wedlock and he wants to have a say on a moral compass about America. I would never listen to a pastor who has immoral issues, who has zipper problems, who sleeps around, and he's known for it. You can, you see, one thing about my perspective is that I know some of the stories from behind the scenes because I work with some of the people that he's been around. So for him to have a, to try to have a say on what the moral compass is at the church, when you can live and leave a, a holy life, that's just derelict. To take hold of whatever it is that you go after. I anoint your feet by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will have dominion in the earth just as you do in heaven. And all the people of God said, Amen. I don't know. This is. Sisters, make makes some noise no sense. even this now. This is a. Uh, you know, I pray for all the families, but this is terrible that a pastor would decide when a baby gets to be aborted or have a want to say an influence. You know, having a pastor that believes in abortion is like going to the devil for hope. This is just not okay. This is the type of stuff that we need to stand against, and it should make no sense. I know that there is plenty of Christians who believe in the separation of church and state. If that's the case, then how come people throughout the scriptures, every time that there was a crisis, they went to Jesus? Because no matter what the crisis is, no matter what the problem is, as believers, we don't have a right. We have a responsibility to put the values of Christians, to put the values of the church and the morale. People say, well, Jesus was completely completely different because there was no loss. Jesus had so many laws throughout the scriptures. There were had so many that you have the Ten Commandments and this were just only ten about the I think it's 144 of the laws that he had. He had a kingdom. He had a monarchy. And his kingdom is either you obey by what this establishment kingdom rule is or you can't really benefit of the benefits of the kingdom and the problem when people do this is that they're trying to justify their own flesh to save and their their conscience from making the wrong decision so this is absolutely disgusting that somebody like him would make a perhaps claim of trying to stand up for women and you're saying that you're declaring a war on women but you're not you can't speak for all the women because not all the women but stand for what you stand for so this is absolutely sad it's disgusting it's irrelevant he has no idea uh what he's talking about quite frankly and i really pray that god would release the fear of the lord on him and terrorize him with the fear of the lord let the terror of god cover come over his complete mind so that he can understand holiness and not try to be a moral compass when he himself has sin issues.
This is unbelievable. Well, guys, this is we're going to be doing more of this and we're going to have a voice because we can't just let all this stuff go by and think that we as people and believers of God can't have a say uh, in what happens in the earth. You know, if they are vocal against us, then we should be able to be vocal against it. Uh, we should stand for God. We should stand for moral righteousness. We should stand for holiness. We should stand and believe God to be the husband of one wife. We should not be in uh, sexual promiscuity issues. We should not be standing against um, something that really God himself hates as the shedding of innocent blood. Um, it's a, a, a completely absurd. But we're going to believe God. We're going to continue to pray. Um, and God can redeem. If there's anybody who watches this, my wife had two voluntary abortions before she got saved. But God still gave her a baby and redeemed the cause of what was going to happen. And it's just amazing how her testimony works. I'm going to clip it at the end of here. And you can watch um, her testimony. And you can also watch our baby dedication as well. So we just pray that this, this this blesses you and don't be afraid to speak up against the issues that are happening. You know, I don't really care about getting canceled or getting frustrated or hate mail from any people that watch this. Uh, there is a cause for the kingdom and we should stand for what we believe. My parents were divorced when I was young, maybe when I was about three or four years old. So my dad wasn't really around and I really spent a lot more time with my grandparents more than anything. Um, my mom was there, but she worked a lot, and she just kind of allowed my grandmother to have more of the authority of caretaking for me and stuff like that. Um, so fast forward to my teenage years, um, I got involved with a boy in school, and he was just a really abusive emotionally, physically, sexually. Um, he would basically forced me to have sex in different places and he would get mad if I said no and so that this was the relationship that was that I was in and I just didn't know how to get my way out of um but anyway I ended up getting pregnant twice um throughout that relationship and my mom made me get an abortion both times um so I basically had no say in those decisions and then I ended up getting pregnant a third time with him. And that time I finally decided I wanted to stand up for myself. And I said, no, like I'm going to keep this one. But I ended up getting a miscarriage. Um, and I ended up getting the courage to leave that guy. But um, just to stick with the abortion message that Kevin was talking about, you know, that was never spoken about. Like after my mom took me, there was no, you know, consoling me or talking to me about what happened. It was just what was done and that was it. And she was scared of what her parents would say. And um, she was just had, a, you know, a lot of anxiety and fear of man. And that just goes to show how far fear of man can go. Like, I know we hear it all the time, like, oh, you know, pray against fear of man and, you know, fear God instead. But like, seriously, like, Fear of man, look how far it can take you. It can take you to just disregard all your morals and what's right because you're so afraid of what somebody else is going to tell you. But in reality, I would have been okay. My, mother, my grandmother was actually a babysitter. So I would have been fine. She would have been mad at my mom for a little bit, and she probably would have helped me with those babies. So at the end, it would have been okay. And, you know, if there's any girl out there that's thinking about getting an abortion and you think it's just a decision you're going to just make and leave and it was like, oh, I chose to wear pink today instead of blue. And it's like, you know, just no, it's not that kind of a decision because you know what? Later on in life, when you do have a baby, you're going to wonder what would have that other baby would have been like? Because I didn't think about any of that until I had my son recently and I saw the end result of a pregnancy and I was like, wow, like what would have those other children would have been like, you know? It's not like God says, oh, you know, you got rid of that one. I'll just remake him again, him or her again in the same form. No, it's a totally different human, totally different destiny that could have been there. Um, so anyways, fast forward to my early 20s. I um, still lived in the world just full of shame and fear and anxiety. And I was super shameful of that past of that guy that I was with, um, still having sexual partners with my boyfriends, whoever I was with at that time. Um, and then my mom ended up getting saved at some point, maybe when I was 22 or 23, but I still didn't understand. I didn't really want any parts of it. But there was one day 
Nobody was at my house. And I turned on the TV, and it was still on a message that I guess my mom was listening to. And um, I just wanted to watch it that day. And at the end, they did an altar call. And at that moment, I went on the floor, and I had my hands up. So God's, God's mercy met me there in my living room. I had no plans of going to church. I had no clue about Jesus. I had never read the Bible in my life. And from that day on, I read the Bible three, four hours a day at my mom's house. Like, I had always read it. It was just supernatural. I went from knowing nothing to just consuming God's word daily and worshiping in my room by myself. Like, I was just eager and so hungry to just change everything and just realizing the mess that I was in, because I actually, I honestly didn't realize it. Sometimes there's people in the world, they think if they're not a murderer, if they're not, you know, whatever, they think I'm a good person, they don't need to be saved. They don't realize they need to be saved, and that was me. And so God's love showed up, and God's light showed up, and I realized that I did need salvation. So, um, yeah, I got saved at that moment, and had a little hiccups in the beginning, but once I submitted to the process, like I said, I was, I would, I would do deliverance on myself in my mom's room. I would um, worship by myself. I would read the Bible three, four hours by myself. And um, the Holy Spirit told me to get a church, to go to a church and find one, and I did. And I ended up meeting my husband maybe about a year later. And um, before I met him, I actually made a promise to God. I I bought myself a ring, a purity ring, and I said. I'm not getting married or I'm not dating. I'm not even going to talk to anybody until you show me who my husband is. And he did. The day Rodrigo flew in for a conference that was happening at my church, uh, I had a dream that we were on a date. So I knew, to me, I think that was, he, God knew that I was so set on, unless she showed me, I wouldn't even pay attention to a guy. He knew had, he had to send me the dream. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, I met my husband, we got married, and um, we had a little bit of trouble getting pregnant. Like, about a year, year and a half we tried, and I was starting to get worried. Like, is it because of my past? Even though it was 10 plus years ago, I'm like, did something get messed up in, you know, my reproductive system? But God would always tell me, it's going to happen naturally, don't worry, and just wait on the Lord. And I just waited, and I prayed, and me and my husband decided we're going to pray together and we prayed consistently for maybe 10 days or so when we really were want to buckle down and have a baby and before I knew it I found out I was pregnant and even a month before I found out I was pregnant I had another dream that I gave birth to a baby boy named Mateo so I had a dream that I gave birth to a baby boy named Mateo which means gift of God I saw you in a dream while you were forming in my womb. I saw you in a dream and I even heard your name while God was forming you. He was forming me so I could be the mother of your destiny. selected me to be your mother God selected you to be my child God selected me to be your mother God selected you to be my child oh you're not in it you're not a thing Only God can make a baby You're not a thing You're not a thing Only God can make a baby You're not a thing You're not a thing Only God can make a baby You're not a thing You're not a thing Only God can make a baby And that's why God selected me to be your mother God selected you to be my child oh God selected me to be your mother God selected you to be my child and now I'm holding I'm seeing it, this gift you gave to me, 
I'll sacrifice for him Like you sacrificed for me You're my letter to the future That I will never see Oh, I'll sacrifice for him Like you sacrificed for me You're my letter to the future That I will never see I'm giving back to you Now this life That you gave to me I'm giving back to you Daily trusting in your voice To show me what to do Daily trusting in your voice Show me what to do He'll be protected And not protected By His Father and His Mother He'll be corrected And directed By His Father and His Mother And that's why God Selected me to be your mother. God selected you to be my child. Oh, God selected me to be your mother. God selected you to be my child. You're not in it, you're not a thing. Only God can make a baby, you're not a me, you're not a thing. Only God can make a baby, you're not a me, you're not a thing. Only God can make a baby, you're not a me, you're not a thing. Only God can make a baby. One in heaven, one on earth I'll show you how to love them both Touching heaven, touching earth My baby has two daddies One in heaven, one on earth I'll show you how to love them both Touching heaven, touching earth Oh, my baby has two daddies One in heaven, one on earth Touching heaven, touching earth My baby has two daddies One in heaven, one on earth I'll show you how to love them both Touching heaven, touching earth Touching heaven, touching earth 